Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett and welcome to a new episode of UFOs in the Paranormal. I've got a pretty interesting and unusual episode for you today. I call it, I Punched a Gray in the Face. Yes, you heard me right. These are cases in which people have physically assaulted greys, punching them, choking them, pushing them down. I was surprised to find so many cases. I first became interested in this when I had a few of my own cases, and I wondered if this was a thing, and after doing some research, I found many other cases. I found about 10, and I suspect there are quite a bit more than I'm presenting here today. That's one of the reasons I want to do this video. As any psychologist knows, when confronted with the unknown or a dangerous or scary situation, people do often react with a fight or flight response. So that's exactly what's going on here. People react with a fight response. What's very interesting about UFO encounters and particularly humanoid encounters, when a gray or other ET enters a person's bedroom, they will often say something to the effect of, do not be afraid, have no fear, no harm will come to you, we are not here to hurt you, something along those lines, and yet people do react with fear. I think this is why often people are rendered unable to move, because the greys are protecting themselves from what they have learned, is that we often have a violent response to their appearance. So these cases, I think, do have quite a bit to say, not only about us, but about the greys themselves. That's another reason why I wanted to do this video today. Again, some of these are from my own research. Others are from cases I found in the UFO literature and from other researchers. And I think they're really interesting and unusual cases that haven't got a lot of attention. And that's another reason why I wanted to do this video today. So let's just get started. Perhaps the most famous example of this kind comes from very well-known contactee, Travis Walton. You probably all know this story very well, so I won't go into too much detail other than to say that on November 3rd, 1975, Travis and six other men encountered a UFO hovering at treetop level in the Sitgreaves National Forest outside of Snowflake, Arizona. While the others stayed in the pickup truck, Travis was very interested in UFOs and jumped out of the truck and ran directly underneath this object. The other men were freaked out when a beam of light or an electrical discharge came out of the bottom of the craft and struck Travis in the chest. So they drove off and when they returned, Travis was gone. Travis was actually missing for five days. And when he reappeared, he had an incredible story to relate. He described how he was taken on board. On board, he met greys and human-like ETs. Again, this story is pretty well known. But one of the most unusual aspects of his case is that he physically fought with the ETs. After being struck by this beam of light or this electrical discharge, Travis woke up lying down on a table and initially he thought he was actually in a hospital. Only after seeing that he was surrounded by greys did he try to fight back. And I'll just let Travis describe in his own words how he reacted. As he says, There were three of them. Hysteria overcame me instantly. I struck out at the two on my right, hitting one with the back of my arms, knocking it into the other one. My swing was more of a push than a blow. I was so weakened. The one I touched felt soft through the cloth of its garment. The muscles of its puny physique yielded with a sponginess that was more like fat than sinew. The creature was light and had fallen back easily. Uh, at this point, the greys reacted by quickly filing outside of the room and Travis sort of followed them out into a corridor. And again, his story is pretty well known, so I won't go into it. But important here is he did fight back, and he was able to basically punch one of these greys. 
It's very interesting that they quickly fled the room at this point. So could it be that the greys are physically weak and fragile? Consider this next case, which comes from the files of the Mutual UFO Network. It was around 4 a.m. on April 5, 2017, when a young man from Del Valle, Texas, was woken up by the sound of his family's dogs barking. And overcome with a, quote, weird feeling, he began to search the house, and checking the room where his mom and her boyfriend slept, he was shocked to see two greys. Each of them were about six feet tall and were standing by the beds. And at the same time, another gray, this one was just under seven feet tall, came floating in through the window. And as the witness says, and I quote, My first reaction was to grab the nearest one. I flipped him and punched him in the head. The other figure grabbed me. I turned and swung at it and punched it in the head. And as soon as I looked back to the third figure, it was floating back out the window. Both my mom and her friend started to float up and I blacked out. I woke up back in bed sweating, panting heavily, and my fists were red and in pain. The dogs were barking really violently outside. So this is an interesting case for a number of reasons. One is that, yes, he was able to physically punch these guys, but he ended up blacking out and apparently wasn't able to stop this onboard experience from taking place. And waking up with his fists red and in pain, this is a physiological reaction, so that's good physical evidence there. And also the fact that the dogs were barking this is an animal reaction case. So there's some very interesting evidence to this case, but important here is that he was able to fight back. A single red light in the center. It paced her car for about a half minute. Ann Worley from Indiana, and also Ann Druffel, a Southern California-based UFO researcher. The main witness is Patsy Wingate, and she, well, She's either from Riverview, Kentucky, or Knoxville, Tennessee. There's some discrepancy here in the various reports. At any rate, Patsy reports many encounters with Grays throughout her life. But it was one winter evening in 1985 that Patsy woke up in the middle of the night to see three Grays entering her bedroom through the wall, as you can see pictured here. And Patsy, who was pregnant at the time, mentally shouted out, leave me alone. But the three greys continued to advance, and at this point, point Patsy became enraged. And Ann Druffel, who interviewed Patsy, writes what happened next. So I'm quoting Ann Druffel here. As Ann says, she jumped out of the bed and ran towards them, attacking the one in the center, who was slightly taller than the other two. And without thinking, she seized its neck and squeezed firmly. To her astonishment, the thin neck snapped, and the entity's oversized head fell onto its back. She heard the sound of its neck snapping. Now, this was not exactly what Patsy had meant to do. Uh, she says she was actually horrified. She had only meant to stop the E.T., not kill it. And as Patsy says in her own words, his neck just broke like a twig, just psst, like that, and its head fell straight backward. Now, the other two got this look on their faces like, huh? You could see their eyes lift slightly in surprise. It was like, how did she do that? Like, how come we couldn't stop her? The other two greys then scooped up their fallen companion and exited the same way they had arrived through the wall. So Anne Druffel quotes this case in her book, How to Prevent Alien Abduction. And one of the methods, she says, is physical resistance. There are so many cases like this. Here is another case, which occurred in Alamogordo, New Mexico, to Sergeant Charles L. Moody. This is quite a famous case. I did cover this in my other YouTube episode. 
the top 20 cases in New Mexico. So I'm not going to go into great detail about this, but I do want to cover it because it's a very interesting case of this kind. And what happened was Sergeant Charles Moody had gone off base to view a meteor shower. Suddenly he sees an object drop down out of the sky and land in front of his car. This was initially shrouded in missing time, but he recalled it naturally in the days and weeks following. And what he recalled was very interesting. Gray type ETs came out of the craft and walked up to his car and tried to pull him out. And this is when he sort of fought back at them. And I'll just quote Charles Moody directly. As he says, Two beings came toward me from the craft. They didn't walk, they glided. They put their hands on the car door as if trying to open it. I was scared stiff, but I was ready to fight my way out. I shoved open the car door, putting my 235 pounds behind it, and it knocked one of the aliens back. I scrambled out of the car and threw a fist right in the face of the other one. The face felt soft. I saw him fall back, and then the lights went out. Now when Charles came to, he was lying on a table inside a craft. One of these ETs was studying him. He tried to get up, but couldn't. And basically, they healed him. As he says, I was taken to a room, and the elder or leader touched my back and legs with a rod-looking device. When I asked what he was doing, he said there had been a scuffle when they first made contact with me and he only wanted to correct any misplacement, any injury that might have happened. I do not remember any type of scuffle or fight, but I do know my back hurt the next day, and the knuckles on my right hand were sore also. So yeah, he later did recall the entire experience, and this is a good example of another person who fought physically with the greys. And here's another case, which I believe is from John Mack. I was told about this from another person. I couldn't find the direct source, but I'm including it here because it does fit right in. And here is the case. Apparently, the witness was drunk at the time the ETs came to take him, and he managed to break free of his paralysis and choke one of the small greys. And uh, as he was choking the small gray, he said that the gray felt confusion and possibly fear. And uh, were really surprised that the he had actually broken free of the paralysis and attacked them. And immediately tall grays came in and took over and he found himself back under their control again and was returned to a field near his home, not back to the original site where he was taken. So that's a brief case, but again, fits right in. And here's another. This one is quite interesting. This occurred on October 27, 1975, near Tripp Pond. This is outside of Oxford, Maine. David Stevens and his friend were driving along when suddenly a UFO appeared. It appeared to take control over their car, and the next thing they knew, they were driving down West Poland Road. This craft is hovering in front of him. Suddenly there are several ETs, greys, in the road in front of them, and they are pulled on board. Now all of this was recalled under hypnosis, but what David recalled is pretty interesting, and I will just quote him directly. As he says, I was standing in a room, a metal room, and I was looking out a window at the car. It was still skidding sideways, and Glenn, his friend, was in the car, still sitting in the driver's seat. A moment or so later, one of the creatures came into the room. He told me not to be afraid that he wasn't going to hurt me. He took me into another room. It looked like an operating room, and there were four other creatures in there. He told me to get up on the table and took two needles of blood out of me. Then they wanted me to take off my clothes and lie down on the table. I didn't want to, and I got up and hit one of them. They didn't do anything. He just backed away from me and told me again they weren't going to hurt me. I don't think I was frightened, but when I was listening to the hypnosis tapes, I could hear myself breathing real heavy, 
and I finally did get on the table and let them undress me. So this is another case where a person actually fought with the greys, and he later said that their skin texture was different from ours. He said it felt a little bit harder. Uh, he said there was no discoloration where he hit this gray. No mark uh, was made where he hit the gray. And he says that the gray seemed quite surprised when he hit him. So yeah, very interesting case. Here is another case which occurred in October of 2010 to a gentleman by the name of Kevin from Bangor, Maine. He did report his case to MUFON. It's quite a lengthy report, so I am just going to give a small portion of it, the part where he did have a physical alteration with the grays. And I'm going to quote him directly. As Kevin says, Then one of them put their hand on my nose, and another one put this small black tube up my nose. It made this noise. The alien greys had long fingers, very tall, had a little mouth that moved up and down in a motion like a fish mouth, but nothing was coming out. I remember screaming after they did that. The next thing I remember was the thing I was standing up against slammed down making this loud noise. It slammed down like a table, so I was now lying down. They then brought me towards the left side of the room. I began to get hostile and remember cocking my left leg back and kicking the alien to my lower left. He went against the wall and fell down. I clearly remember doing it and watching the gray fly against the wall and sliding down. The other grays quickly backed off. The next thing I remember was being on the road again. What's interesting about this report, a little end note, is he later adds that, and I quote, I used to have a crooked nose. But since the alien stuck that small black tube up my nose, it is straight again. So that's an interesting detail. And here is yet another case uh, in which a person wrote his report on Reddit. And he says, this is a true story. I punched an alien, but maybe I am still a skeptic. Because he's not sure if this was a dream or not. But this is his report. And I'll just quote him directly as he says, This happened to me a few years back when I was about 15 or 16 years old. I don't remember the day exactly, but I was still in high school. Overall, it was a very brief encounter. I still believe I might have been dreaming, however. I usually don't remember my dreams in detail, so this was odd. I also have mild scoliosis, and because of the fact that my back was involved in this, it makes me think it could have been a stress dream. Anyway, here's the story. I'm laying on my back up towards the ceiling, which is unusual because I usually sleep on my side. I'm looking towards my door, and there on the edge of my bed is what would be described as a classic gray alien about four feet tall. And he's pouring some type of liquid on my back, and I can feel the skin being healed. So he goes on to say that uh, he jumps out of bed, and as he says, as fast as I can, and I throw a left hook as hard as I can into its cheek. The funny thing about it, though, I can tell I scared him because his eyes got noticeably wider and he let out some type of metallic-sounding scream. When my fist made contact with him, to my surprise, his skin was very soft and warm. People talk about these things like they are lizards. At least with this guy, that was not the case. He had a very weak frame. I remember feeling some bone, and the gray skin was covered in little fine hairs. But after my first contact, everything went black again. This I don't remember seeing visually. However, I do have a memory of two larger grays in silver suits coming in to control me and put me back in bed. And he also says that they communicated with him telepathically. So there are many of details here which we do see in standard contact accounts. Now in my own UFO research, cases of people punching aliens are rare, but it does happen. And one example comes from a gentleman by the name of Tim. He does not want his last name used. He's a sports instructor from New Iberia, 
Louisiana. I did cover his case in detail in my episode, How to Fly a UFO, so I won't quote it all here. But as a young boy, Tim did have a series of close-up UFO sightings and missing time incidents. He began having dreams at night that he was on board a UFO, though at first he wasn't sure if these were just dreams or actual encounters. This continued into his teenage years. Uh, He was actually around 20 when he had another alien dream, only on this occasion he had proof that it wasn't a dream at all. It was real. And as he says, this was his one truly fearful experience. And I'm just going to quote Tim directly and fairly extensively here. As Tim says, I had what I thought was a dream, where the aliens had taken me up into the spaceship and they had restrained me on a table and they left the room. I got loose somehow. They hadn't restrained me fully and I got loose. And I got up and I started walking around. And when they noticed I was walking around, well, one of them came at me and I punched him in the head. His head was soft, like a beanbag almost. When I punched him in the head, he went down. I think it killed him. Suddenly I was fighting several of them. I was fighting them and I was beating them, physically hitting them. I remember one of them jumping towards me. He had like three or four fingers on each hand. I remember him jumping towards me and then I remember seeing like seven or eight other ones right behind him all coming at me at the same time. And I remember seeing his eyes, his big black eyes, right in front of my face. And I remember going backwards, and that's the last thing I remember. Now, when Tim woke up, he instantly recalled this dream, and but looking down at his arm, he saw that he was actually hurt. Z says, I had a cut on my arm, like a scratch or a scrape. It took a long time to heal, but it finally did heal up. He wanted to believe that he had hurt himself while sleeping, but he knew this couldn't be true. He couldn't have cut himself that badly, and it was one of what would become many encounters. I did cover that case in my book, On Board UFO Encounters. And here's another case from the same book. This comes from a gentleman I call Gary. That is a pseudonym. He's from Cumbria, England. And when Gary was a young boy, he and his parents took a vacation from their home in Cumbria. And on their return trip, they were followed by a UFO. I did cover this in my UFO YouTube episode, Gary vs. the Greys. So again, I'm not going to go into great detail. But Gary and his family began having more UFO sightings. Meanwhile, Gary reported seeing short, dark figures coming into his bedroom at night, and this began a lifelong series of encounters with the Greys. Numerous times throughout his life, Gary found himself paralyzed and floating from his bed and out the window. He had many conscious memories of being on board a UFO. In fact, in most of these memories, he is paralyzed or strangely obedient. He did not remember this through hypnosis, it's fully conscious encounters. However, sometimes Gary has fought back. On several occasions, Gary woke up to find Greys in his bedroom or walking around inside his house. And while most of his encounters occurred in the middle of the night, Gary does recall one incident from 2016 that occurred in the morning hours. He had walked downstairs, and to his shock, there was a Gray standing in the living room next to the base of the stairs. Now, this had happened before. He instantly remembered an earlier incident like this when he he had come upon a gray in the living room, standing, he said, like a scolded schoolboy with its head bent down. And on that occasion, Gary had passed out before, before he had a chance to react. This time, however, events unfolded very differently. Gary lunged forward, wrapped his hands around the gray's neck, and began choking it. And as Gary says in his own words, This time it wasn't as quick, but I was. I grabbed it by the throat. In a single moment, a thousand thoughts went through my head. I remember thinking, how surreal. I've got some creature from another world by the throat. What the hell do I do now? Its skin felt cold. 
firm and leathery. It was a split second because then its spindly little arms were spinning around like windmills, desperately trying to get rid of me. And it was screaming in my head, Get off me! Get off me now! At this point, without warning, something rushed at Gary from behind and he instantly lost consciousness. And as he says, that's all I remember. I have no idea what happened after that, where I went, or for how long. I have no idea. But looking back, it's nice to make those bastards panic for a change. So Gary does not like these encounters, and more soon followed. It was during late December in 2018, Gary was lying in bed when he suddenly began to sense the greys coming. Um, he sometimes had a feeling. As he says, sometimes there's an energy that precedes them just before they enter the room. I don't know if it's to make it easier for them to move or to subdue me. It's kind of a heaviness. It's hard to explain. I've certainly heard this from other people before. But as Gary says, the heaviness was particularly strong this time. But if it was meant to paralyze him, it wasn't working. But it did let him know that the greys were actually in the room, and this time he was ready for them. And as Gary says, and I quote, I waited until it had pulled the covers right back, and I punched it in the face. And I can tell you now, they may look small and cute to some people sometimes, but this thing suddenly changed. It was furious. It hissed loudly and lunged for me. Its face changed. Suddenly it looked nothing like a gray. It looked like something completely different. Its small, narrow mouth went from a tiny slit to a wide, gaping thing with spiky teeth. It was something that in all intent and purposes seems to try to come across as innocent, frail, and harmless but in fact has the teeth of a predator for gripping, shredding, and ripping. And when I punched it, it was like its mask slipped for a moment, revealing its true identity. I shot up in bed. I thought I was going to die. I threw my fist right back. I was going to punch it through the wall. I thought I was fighting for my life. At this point, the experience abruptly ended, and upon awakening, Gary did remember the confrontation, the leathery feel of the gray's skin, the way it had opened its mouth to reveal small pointed teeth. He was about to punch it again when he passed out, but he was amazed at how he had been able to fight back against the grays. They were no longer able to paralyze him with their energy, and next time he vowed to fight back again. It was only a few months later when he had this chance. He was lying in bed when he felt their energy filling the room. They were there. He thought to himself, this time he wouldn't punch them, he would kick them with more power. But as Gary says, as soon as I thought that, I was out cold. I think I'm now in their bad books. So Gary still continues to have encounters. He called me fairly recently to report another gray standing in the doorway of his room. He's still not happy about his encounters. He wishes they would just end. Uh, even though he has had positive encounters as well and has had some good effects from all of his encounters, ultimately he doesn't like it. And here's another case, also from my book Onboard UFO Encounters. This involves a gentleman by the name, well, I call him Ramon. Uh, that is a pseudonym. He's a now retired United States Marine officer from Palmdale, California. And starting at age six, Ramon had a series of onboard experiences with gray ETs. And more would continue throughout his teenage years. But it was in his mid-30s, in December of 1982, that Ramon had his most extensive onboard experience. It was during this experience that he was physically examined. He saw hybrid ET babies and more. It's quite a complicated case. I did cover this in a very early YouTube episode on this channel. But it was during this incident that Ramon got in a physical fight with one of the greys. He had just been shown the hybrid babies, and the greys were now taking him to be physically examined. At this point, Ramon was unable to resist, and he sat down. 
And as he says, out of the air, a tabletop floats up right to me over my knees and just stays there. And looking on the table, he could see a little Petri dish type container. And at that moment, a taller gray walked in. And as Ramon says, he comes over and tries to put a cup over my genitals. They started to take off my shirt and unbuckle my pants. And at this point, Ramon broke free from the semi-paralysis and tried to fight them. Now the Dr. Gray, is how Ramon described him, said, Calm down. Calm down. Everything will be okay. And he tried to push Ramon back into the chair. And this is when Ramon felt a surge of anger. And summoning his marine combat training, he lifted his arms up and pushed the gray forcefully down onto the ground. And he was able to do this fairly easily, though the gray quickly stood back up. And now Ramon suddenly found himself surrounded by a half dozen more grays. And the Dr. Gray told the others, hold him down. And as Ramon says, they started to push me down into that vental chair, and I was fighting back. At this point, the Dr. Gray then tried to place a mask-like device over Ramon's face, presumably to sedate him so they could get their sperm sample. This is what Ramon thought. This was when he noticed that the doctor's fingers were twice as long as a human's, and appeared almost claw-like. This is quite a complicated case, but Ramon lost consciousness. His onboard experience continued, but important here is that he was able to fight back. Now, in my book, Symmetry, all about the experiences of Dolly Safran, she has been on board a craft many times when other people were being taken onto the craft for medical examinations. And she reports that people are often very afraid, and occasionally some people do react violently. And in fact, Dolly was present when a large muscular man was awakened following his examination. This man reacted with intense fear, and before anyone could stop him, the man leapt forward and attacked one of the greys, yanking its arm and pulling it from its socket. The gray fell to the ground, and the man, of course, was quickly rendered unconscious and placed in a room where he remained until they were able to return him back to his home. And Dolly does remember another similar incident during which a woman reacted with anger and terror. Before anyone could stop her, she assaulted one of the grays, a female gray, breaking its arm. So, yeah, people do sometimes react violently. I did cover these cases in some of my interviews with Dolly, but you can again read about it in my book, Symmetry, A True UFO Adventure. And there are other examples. One lady I interviewed, I call her Wendy. She woke up one day, this was in the early 1990s, I believe. She woke up to find the greys surrounding her bed. She jumped up and kicked one of them in the neck. Its neck snapped, and the creature fell to the ground. Instantly, the other greys scooped up their companion, and they disappeared through the wall. Wendy later regretted her actions. She believed at the time that she may have actually killed the being, but she acted instinctively and in self-defense. At that time, she did have a lot of fear of her encounters, though later on, she came to realize that the ETs were not trying to hurt her or scare her, and were, in fact, interested in her well-being. She was not only healed by the ETs of a cyst in her fallopian tubes, but they taught her all kinds of things, how to do psychic abilities, hands-on healing, and more. She now looks at the ETs as brothers, as sisters, as family. So she overall feels her case is very much benevolent. But you can see how... Uh, it's understandable that she would react in a way that uh, was self-defense, how she felt. And yeah, that's perfectly understandable. I certainly don't judge her for that, but I think her case is important for a couple of reasons. Again, it shows that people can fight back, 
and in some cases actually prevent an encounter from occurring. It also shows that this probably says more about us than it does about the Greys, because she ultimately came to the conclusion that they weren't trying to hurt her. And here is yet another case. This is a little treat for you. I went on to Dave Scott's radio show, Spaced Out Radio, and was talking about these types of cases. And to my amazement, Dave, who has had many UFO experiences, said that this actually happened to him. He fought a gray. And here's a little one-minute audio clip in which he describes his own experience with this. I remember one time when I was taken, and I woke up and I was standing, and there were five of them around. They were about five and a half, six feet tall. And I remember hearing the one say, oh, crap, he's awake, he's awake, he's awake. And there was one standing right in front of me. And they were holding down my wrists, but they're not strong. And I, I'm i left-handed. And I got my left hand free, and I punched the one right in the chest in front of me. And it went flying back. And it felt like... Uh, how would you put it? Almost rubbery. Like a soft rubber uh, of... I, I don't know how to explain it. The next thing I know, I was out. I was right back out again. And wow. woke up the next day. And that's the only snippet I have from that, is hitting that one right in the chest. So these kinds of accounts, I think, are quite rare, but they do show that it is possible to physically resist the greys. And in fact, researcher Anne Druffel maintains that there are several methods that people can use to defend themselves against alien abduction, with, quote, physical resistance being one of them. Again, she wrote about this in her book. And as Anne Druffel says, what is all important here is the ability of an ordinary size human to attack and disable a UFO entity. It shows that physical struggle is sometimes possible, even in the worst of abduction scenarios, and indicates the so-called greys are not physically superior to humans. There you go. There are 10 true cases of people who punched a grey in the face or assaulted them in some way. I did cover these cases in my book, Not From Here, Volume 4, which again is all about the more unusual cases, the outlying cases, cases with weird patterns to them. And certainly I think these cases qualify. Again, I think there are far more than the 10 I've presented here. I suspect after I post this episode, some people will come forth and say that, yes, this happened to me. And they do, I think, have something to say about us and about the ETs themselves. When it comes to us, I think this shows how truly fearful as a species we are, how very much fear-based we are in our thinking even though the ETs do come and say flat out, don't be afraid, we often are afraid. And I think this goes to show why ETs will often render a person paralyzed. Another really interesting aspect to these cases, I think, is the fact that people are able to do this in some cases, push down a gray or punch them. And the grays go right down. And I think this shows that perhaps they are delicate Perhaps we are, as humans, physically stronger than them. Certainly they're technologically advanced, uh, morally, ethically advanced, certainly psychically and spiritually advanced. But as far as physical, well, we may be actually stronger than them. So that alone, I think, makes these cases very important. And I'm hoping some other people do come forward because these cases don't get a lot of attention, and I think it's important that people know about them. And again, that's why I wanted to do this episode, just trying to let everyone know all the different aspects of UFO contact. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this very unusual episode. I really appreciate you watching. And once again, keep looking for the truth. Keep asking questions. And most important, keep having fun.